What are some of your memories of that magical year, and then in particular the playoffs, the first time you being in the playoffs at Wrigley Field? Well, 89 was uh, um, right, a beautiful year because we won, but that was the year that Sean Amita was born. Which we're going to get to in a second. We're, we're going to get to that for sure. Because you and I have talked backstage about that. So, so. Ah, uh, you know what? Forget it. Let's go on. Let's go right to that question. Let's go right to that question. Because I love what you were, you and I talked a little bit backstage, and I was so uh, taken by your opinion of this. So we all know the Sean O'Meara being on TV and Harry Carey talking about it and everything. Give us your impression or your first impressions of what the Sean O'Meara meant and what you thought of it. Well, at first I didn't like it. My batting average was one seventy seven, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like. May 28th, 29th, so that's a lot of bats. Right. And I didn't think it was funny that guys hold up like bat Because on the scoreboard, it stays up there for right. so long. And I'm like, damn. Then all the teammates getting on me and say, Sean, look at your bat I said, I know my bat <laughs> I got this guy out here with this bat oh, I'm trying to be nice. I am pissed. <laughs> and he has my arms. I'm like, really? It's Man, so that whole year was like funny, and then that year, I mean, my wife told me one day, man, we playing the um the Los Angeles Dodgers in L.A., right, Tracy? And I call, I said, how you doing this day? She go, what are you doing at, at the plate? I said, what are you swinging at? And I'm like, what are you talking? I said, it's not that easy. Well, I wouldn't have swung. I said, you ain't playing. And, on. My wife pissed me off. The fans have pissed me off. But everybody is right. But my wife goes, You made my stomach hurt. So I had to turn the TV off. So, oh my goodness. So I'm like, Wow. So I said, You just turn on when Andre and Rhino and Grace get up. She said, Yeah. I said, Okay. And it, it hit me. Then it's shining on me. Then it's my wife getting on me. But it motivated me. It made me feel good that people care. You know, my wife was telling the truth. And she said, what are you swinging? I said, it's not that easy. Right, right. I said, I want to be Rhino, too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be Andre and Grace, but we can't be like them all the time. Right. Let me be me, and that's why I had the best manager in Zim. He let me be myself. Mm -hmm. He said, Sean, if you want to swing yeah. at it, swing at it. But when your bad nerves go down, it's on you. So I had to slow down a little bit, so I slowed down. Then I learned how to walk. That was the highest walk I had was 30 30 walks and Grace goes, Sean, if you walk, it helps your bat now. I go, really? <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> so I said, Grace, I help with bat now. Well, if you walk, it's not a time at bat. I go, really? I go, <laughs> so I walked and I got it up. And I seen it, Sean, and me, and it kept going up. And it went to 180. I said, wow, that's a lot. It went to 185. <laughs> But it really, man, felt good when my wife and my kids were saying, Daddy, Daddy, look at Harry Carey. He said, feed the meat, feed the meat. And it really made me feel good. And everywhere I went, every town, everybody had a Sean on me. Yeah. But I knew which one was the original one. <laughs> right, 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 right. And that's my buddy, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't realize this is actually an official Sean on me there. And Sean knows that actually signed it inside the house. Pretty cool, man. That's really, really cool. It's all him. He made me popular. First, he pissed me off. <laughs> but he's my buddy. But it's funny, you know, I mean, like, now with social media, things go viral, right? I mean, so that actually, back in the 80s, late 80s, and that, that's kind of your viral moment that kind of got you to become, like, more of a household name outside of Chicago because that Sean O'Meara was something that people actually gravitated to. Yeah, they did, but I didn't like it. You didn't like it? <laughs> I wasn't hitting my weight. Uh, but, but I mean, look, eventually, come on, eventually you got it up. And uh, you brought up Harry Carey, and, and I want to bring it, because obviously we all love Harry Carey. Um, I, I, I feel like I grew up, and he was my grandfather. I never met the man, but I felt like he was, he was my grandfather. I came home from school, watched it on TV, heard him talk about baseball. I felt like I knew him so well. What was, from a player standpoint, what did you guys think of Harry Carey? Because you weren't watching the games like we were watching the games. So what was Harry Carey to you and the teammates uh, from, a, you know, from a dugout level? Uh, Harry was the biggest Cub fan. Oh, boy, he wanted us to win so bad. Right. Everybody thought he was a front runner, but he wasn't. He was just a Cub fan. I mean, he really loved us. And um, it's funny, every time I get up the bat, he calls me Shawan, Shawan, Shawan. Shawan, Shawan. <laughs> Which you don't like, apparently, right? No, it's not that. But when we go on a road trip and get on a plane, he calls me Sean. Oh, really? <laughs> so, okay, so, 
Okay, so just to clarify, on the air, he would call you Sawan, because it's kind of spelled that way, right? Well, it's, it's spelled that way, man. My grandmother spelled that way. It's unique, so I kept it, and he kept calling me Shawan. I never corrected him. But on the plane, personally, he said Sean. Sean. <laughs> he would call me Sean. Then when other people call me Shawan, I correct him. My name is Sean. Oh, okay, yeah. I correct Harry. Never. Never. That's great. That's great. Never. Um, I'd say for our generation and our people that are here, the, the iconic double play combination was Dunson to Samberg to Grace. Yeah. I mean, that was everything, right? I think we even have obvious shirts that say that. Dunstan to Sam Reds of Grace. Um, you and Rhino, I mean, just two amazing defenders. What was your relationship like? Uh, because you guys are paired forever. Um, well, me and Rhino is the opposite. Right, right. I'm loud. <laughs> He's quiet. Uh -huh. And my locker was here. His locker was here. And Andre Dawson was here. Okay. So my first year, I was at the phone. Where I had to pick up the phone with phone calls. I had to get it as a rookie. Yeah. Then my second year, they put me next to the two quietest people in the world. <laughs> they didn't say nothing. <laughs> when I say nothing, I mean nothing. Or Ronnie used to say, good morning, Sean, and you got everything. I said, what do you mean you got everything? Well, when the guy steals, you got it. When it's a double play, back to the picture, you got it. I go, oh, okay. And Andre, how you doing today? Hi, Sean. And that was it. <laughs> I'm like, why they put me next to these two guys? <laughs> so I watched them, and like before the game, I'm always laughing and joking and jittery, having a good time, but they was quiet. Mm -hmm. So I'm loud for about three, four hours, and an hour before the game, I get real quiet. Okay. So I learned from Andre and Rhino how to be a um, professional ball player and how to go out there and play the game. So when I'm on the field, I was very quiet. I didn't say much. Mm -hmm. I said, I, mean, I got a film. They said, Sean, you scared? No, I'm not scared, but sometimes I am. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. It's like my wife, like when she watches the game, she said, please hit the ball to Sean first inning. Please. <laughs> I mean, she's right. If I didn't get the ball in the first two innings, I, I get a little nervous. So, I get a little nervous. <laughs> I get nervous, but if I get the first ground ball in the first inning, my nerves are calm. You, you had said that, um, that one time you had seen Rhino make an error, and that was very rare. Obviously, Rhino's Hall of Fame gold glover. You said that uh, you'd seen him make an error, and then you got even more scared because you're like, well, if this guy makes an error. <laughs> I got nervous. I mean, he made an error, the ball went between his legs. I said, oh. <laughs> and Grace looking at me, and I'm looking at him like, man, he made an error. It made me nervous. If he make an error, I know I'm going to make one. <laughs> right, like, right. Man, then he come over, we change pitches, and he goes, Sean, what happened? I go, what do you mean, what happened? I said, you missed it. <laughs> and that day he told me that's the year he broke the record for, um, man, like a second of games, no errors. So he said, I'm not going to make another error th this oh, year. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I said a couple of words, but when he made an error, it made me nervous mm -hmm. because he don't make errors. He's not nervous of nothing except putting ice on his back. Really? Yeah, oh, we can't stand that. <laughs> he was different. He can't stand it. But everything else, he was such a professional, him and Andre. And we learned so much from them. We played. I knew they was Hall of Famers. And, man, we just look up to them and all the players. And all the players I played with, I love all my teammates, especially all the guys, because they taught me how to be a man. Yeah. Um, in your career, I believe you've had two All-Star appearances? Two. I mean, how was that experience for you? I mean, Sean Dunstan, you know, I mean, from New York, you know, legendary shortstop here in Chicago, making the All-Star game a couple of years. How was that? Oh, that was beautiful. I had it. Um, 88 was my first daughter, Whitney, and 1990 was Jasmine, my second daughter. So, And the second one was at Wrigley Field, mm -hmm. and that was really nice. I remember it rained that day, everything. My brother brought him down. I mean, brought my daughter down. And I'm just looking at everybody. Wow, look at this. We're at Wrigley Field. And when they introduced me, wow, I thought I was Andre and Rhino because I got a standing on base. You know, it's cool. it's cool. I thought that was nice. And that's one of the biggest moments in my career. They gave me a stand on base. I thought that was so nice. I felt like Andre and Rhino. That's cool. Well, I mean, I got a feeling this weekend you're going to feel like Andre and Rhino because uh, this man, along with Mark Grace, are being inducted to the Cubs yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah. Walk us through that. Like, who called you? What were you thinking? How do you feel about it? I mean, that's there aren't many, but I mean, the fact that you are officially going to be a Cubs Hall of Famer, uh, walk us through that that moment and what it means to you. 
when I was like, I, mean, I was out with my wife in Arizona, and the people called me, and I'm like, well, you need to come in. I said, for what? I haven't spoke to the Cubs in years. So what you calling me for? So they said, well, we need you to come to the convention. I go, no, no, I don't need no attention. A lot of guys go, I go, I just want to be at home. And now that I'm home, I'm getting older. And you know, you men, you get a little older, you know you're old when you hang out with your wife. <laughs> I remember when I was 21 and my wife and I was boyfriend and girlfriend and now that we older, we 60 and I hang out with her and we ride our bikes together. I go, what I'm doing, I want to be 21. <laughs> but it's nice and we get along good and it's just nice. Um, but when they called me, I thought it was a joke. I haven't spoke to the Cubs. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, Shines went to the um, Cubs Hall of Fame. And I got quiet, and I told my wife. I said, well, me? I said, well, you're going in with Grace. Then when they said Grace, it made me feel really comfortable, because Grace is my buddy. Yeah. And I'm not afraid to say, when I played with Grace, he was my security blanket on the field. Yeah, right. So my skills could come out when I played with Grace and Rhino, because Rhino let me get every ball up the middle. He said, Sean, I will not run into you. I will go around you, you just cut in front. <laughs> And you could just get it, and when I um, right, get the ball in the hole, I'm going to try to throw everybody out because I do have an arm, mm -hmm. and I want to throw a guy out. I wasn't worrying about throwing it away because I knew Mark Grace would um, right, do his best and man, make me look good. Yeah, I mean, is there any better way you could be inducted to the Cubs Hall of Fame than with your buddy Mark Grace? I mean, it's really is cool that you both are getting that together because you guys are honestly, you know, connected forever. Yeah, that's what but I, I mean, I like when Grace came up because when I was the rookie, I was the first one, then Greg Maddox, then Jamie Moore and Ralphie Palmero came up, then Grace came up, but when, when, man, before Grace came up, I was the one who was always in trouble. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't do nothing right. right. If I make a good play, you could have did it better. Or you got a double, you should have had a triple. I couldn't do nothing right. But when Grace came to the Cubs, it switched. And it went to Grace. And I loved it. They used to, they used to rip Mark Grace so bad. I mean, we had a team meeting because we said, you're supposed to wear socks on the plane. And Zim ripped them in LA and said, guys, you had this young stud on the team, don't know the rules of wearing socks. And I, I see Mark just put his And I started crying, I'm laughing. So it all went off on me, but what they was trying to do was tell me and Mark that um, you have a chance to be very good players and leaders of the team after Andre and Rhino leave. But we don't know that, we just want to play and want everybody to accept us and like us. Right. So when he took it hard, I thought it was funny. I still do to this day. And I'm glad he came in, but I'm so happy for him because I know most Cubs fans know how good Mark Grace was. He don't get the publicity. But um, you know he had the most hits in the 90s, right? Yeah. That's more than Tony Gwynn, right? Uh, Wayne Boggs, right? Yeah. Those are Hall of Fame. Mark's a very good player and he's my um, buddy. And everybody know that and I'm so happy he's going in with me. That's awesome, that's awesome, yeah. You had said you hadn't talked to the Cubs in a while, so just because I know you guys got close in 89, and I think, you know, obviously we've been starved for a championship in the city for a long time. How did you feel about 2016? Uh, were you following along? I know I know you were affiliated with the Giants for a while. I know we beat the Giants in 2016. Um, but, like, how did you feel about the actual, like, when the Cubs won the World Series, what crossed your mind, and what did you feel? Well, it was good, I mean, because I was with the Giants, and here... I'm with the Giants, and they go, Sean, who are you rooting for? And I go, what are you talking about? Well, we playing the Cubs. I, I didn't say too much. I was coaching. Right, right. Everyone knows I love the Cubs. Yes, right. So now I'm a coach, and they go, Sean, we playing the Cubs. Who are you rooting for? I was like, whatever. But, <laughs> I said, well, but when they beat us, I knew the Cubs was going to win. Yeah. Because we had a very good team, the Giants. So we just came off three championships, and now here's the Cubs, and they're just a little different. They had little stud players, they had some good players. They hustled, they was a little different. So I said, I knew they was gonna win the World Series. So when they did make the World Series, and my daughter's watching, and we watching the game, she go, why are you rooting for the Cubs? And they pay for our house. <laughs> <laughs> good point, very good point. <laughs> so are we 
for the, but you work for the Giants. I said, they pay for our house. <laughs> I work for the Cubs, but I knew they was going to win. I was happy. I was very happy for the Cubs because they deserved it. The Cub fans deserve it. It was very, yeah. I was a little jealous. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I was a little jealous. Jealous as a player because you guys didn't do it because you were with the Why were you jealous? No, I was jealous because I wasn't on the team. Right, 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 right. <laughs> it wasn't the 89 Cubs. You're right. Correct. Okay, I got you. I got right. you. And the Giants. Beat us. I know. And now with the Giants and I still hate I still hate Will Clark for that for that reason, man. Eighty nine. I still I'm sorry, I do. I just hate him. Along with Steve Garvey and I hate Will Clark. I'm sorry. No apologies. He um <laughs> He um he's a little different. He was very good. I didn't like him at all as a really? player. Oh okay. I didn't like him at all. Okay. But when we became teammates with the Cardinals, he's a class act. Yeah. He's, he's a very good teammate. I know he's a good player, but just, you know, being a Cubs homer, I just hated the man. For no, um, he was good. I still hate him. He always reminds me, what, <laughs> oh, man, what we did to you. I go, we or whatever. Yeah, right, right. A um, couple more questions I have for you. Then we'll open it up to some, some people here. But uh, you were a dynamic defender, and you were a dynamic hitter. What did you like better? Um... <laughs> I like both, but when I'm 0 for 4, when I usually was 0 for 4, <laughs> um, I like defense. Yeah. <laughs> because when I'm 5 for 5, and if a player hits the ball deep in the hole, he's out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But when I'm 0 for 5, he's definitely out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like the that. reason why, because it's called competing, and I want him to be upset like me and have an attitude. Because I took a hit from him when I'm 0 for 5 now. He's about 0 for 4. And I want to hear the guy slam the bat, curse in the dagger. Because we hear every day. And that makes me feel good. So my 0 for 5 is not too bad. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then, you know, just out of curiosity, I know you had this cannon of an arm. When you were coming up, were the thoughts of you ever being a pitcher? Or did you ever want to pitch? Or you just always knew shortstop was for you or infield was for you? or? No, I always wanted to play. I don't want to hit a. I want to hit a pitch. I don't want to be a pitcher. It's no. boring. Don't only play one time. <laughs> so yeah. I had a good arm. So I remember Lee Smith. He's always teased me. He go. He, he calls me Shea Wong. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, Shea Wong. Man, you're not fielding good. You're not hitting good. You know the Cubs need a setup man. I said, No, me. I'm not gonna be your setup man. So. I had to get myself together. They wanted me to pitch in high school, but I said I never wanted to pitch. Yeah. I didn't want to hurt my arm. Okay. They make you throw curveballs, and still to this day, my arm don't hurt. Awesome, awesome. And then how about uh, today's game? You still watch baseball, and if you do, is there a, a player, a shortstop, that, that you are really like, wow, this guy's got it, or I like watching him play or anything? I watch all the shortstops because I'm a shortstop. I root for all the shortstops that okay. do well, and um, – I just love all shorts. I love baseball. And yes, I come for the Giants. I have a man crush on Brandon Crawford. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. That guy really could play nice at the time in his career with it. Right. Going to move him out. So right. I remember seeing him, but we all going to have to be moved out. And um, that's how the game is. But I like all short stuff. So I root for everybody. Awesome. That's cool. Very, very cool answer. Um, well, that's all that I have prepared. Uh, does anybody have any other questions you want to hear? What's up, buddy? Do I, do I have to censor this? By the way, my, my questions have all been edited, okay? Like, I hope that Carly can keep it PG. 